Hi, welcome back. I'm Jill here at the Boonshoff Museum in Dayton, Ohio. We are back in the geology vault. So today I want to share with you my favorite fossil in our entire collection. This guy or gal um, is a trilobite. This specific type of trilobite lived during the Ordovician about 400 million years ago when Ohio was a shallow tropical sea. Um, the bedrock in this area is all phosphoriferous limestone, so we have lots of these fossils, and these guys are even older than dinosaurs, so they're pretty cool. This is the third or fourth largest complete Isotelus fossil that has ever been found. It was found in about 1986 87 um, in the Caesars Creek area here in Ohio. What's really cool about the Isotelus is the Isotelus maximus is Ohio's state fossil. It became the state fossil after a group of school children came to the Boonshoff Museum and saw a cast of the Huffman Dam trilobite here on display in 1985. So this is a cast of the Huffman Dam trilobite. So it's even larger. It was found in 1919 when they were building and doing some work on the Huffman Dam here in the Dayton area. When they found it, it was so large they thought it had to be a new species of trilobite. They brought it to us here at the museum to try to figure out what it was. Now the original Huffman Dam trilobite is on display at the Smithsonian, so it's pretty cool. Um, you might think that once a species has a name, that's its name forever, but that's not the case. As as scientists find new animals and new species, they see diversity within the same species, so sometimes they lump things together or they split them apart. Let's go out in the lab and learn more about this. We are back here in the lab to continue our discussion about species. So as we said just a minute ago, um, species get their names and those names often change. They change because those names are given by people and people are really good at changing their minds. So a species might be named something because all of these traits or characteristics are similar in this group and different in the other. But as we discover more species that might change. So something might have a certain name now and had a different name 50 years ago. So this leads us to a really good activity on critical thinking, da, 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 the objective analysis of an idea. So this is really good. So this activity I actually do with college level students. So you can do this at home and get just as much out of it. I call it the sorting of the buttons. I don't know about you, but my mom always had a button drawer. Hi mom, I miss you. Um, so I assume you guys might have a button drawer where you are. Why don't you just go and get that button drawer and start taking a look at all of those buttons. Whoa! So, you see there's a lot of differences in these buttons, like there are different species of butterfly or trilobite or whatever that might be. So what I would ask you to do is take these buttons and start sorting them out. You could sort them by size, number of holes in the button, by color, by shape, by texture, whatever you might want. And what you'll notice is there's not always a right way to do this. There might be something that ends up in your button drawer that's not even a button at all. The important thing is to realize that there is more than one way to do this. And as the adult, Try to engage your kids and try to have them discuss what made them sort the buttons the way that they did. And do you have any buttons in your pile that don't fit in at all? Would that be a new species or a new type of something? Um, and then you can put kids in different groups and see if they sort them differently. You can have fun with this for hours on end. Uh, or at least I would at my house. Um, and then when you're done, parents, if your kids are old enough, you could actually teach them how to sew a button onto a shirt, which is a very great life skill, I always like to say. And just to tie in a little bit of sewing, a little fun activity for toddlers, I have a four-year-old, so I like to do this. It's very simple. You can take a piece of paper like this, just take a pencil, poke some holes in it, 
like that, get a piece of string and have them lace right through those holes. It's hard to do with my uh, nitrile gloves on that I have for protecting the collection. But this is a fun tactile activity. Sewing buttons, sorting buttons, sewing paper, typologies, it's all great. So stay safe, have fun. We can't wait to see you at the Boonshaw Museum eventually when things are better. I'm socially distantly yours. Have a great day, bye.